One of evolutionists' favorite go-to arguments is the speed of light. They just love to point out that the light from stars millions of light years away indicates that the universe must be millions or even billions of years old simply because the speed of light is constant and by definition must have taken all that time to get here. Time to expose the truth of their assumptions. I just had to investigate. One of the first things evolutionists forget about the God of the universe is that he is, by definition, omnipotent. On the fourth day, he created the stars, so seeing the light from distant stars today, the immediate assumption should be that he created the light from those stars already en route. The reason why this answer doesn't work is that we often see those stars further than 6,000 light years away, exploding, moving, and merging, among other things. If God created the light en route, then these stellar events never took place. The universe would be a big lie, as long as you assume that the speed of light is constant. Since ancient Greek times, light has been a subject of intense study. There were great intellects attempting to reason or determine whether the speed of light was instantaneous or just extremely fast. In in 1629, Isaac Beekman proposed an experiment in which a person observes the flash of a cannon reflecting off a mirror about one mile away. In the 17th century, several experiments were proposed to measure the speed of light and reflection over distance, all of which resulted in no observed delay until 1676 when Ole Romer observed that the periods of Jupiter's innermost moon Io appeared to be shorter when the Earth was approaching Jupiter than when receding from it. He concluded that light travels at a finite speed and estimated that it takes light 22 minutes to cross the diameter of Earth's orbit. Isaac Newton published Romer's work in his 1704 work, Optics. He deduced an estimate of 7 to 8 minutes required for light to travel from the Sun to the Earth. This was a close approximation, considering the most accurate modern measurement puts the time at 8 minutes and 17 seconds. In 1905, Albert Einstein postulated his special theory of relativity and changed the way the world viewed light. Einstein postulated that the speed of light is the same for all observers, regardless of their location or velocity. In this theory, he defined the letter C as the speed of light. The result of his equations led to the unification of electromagnetism. As Einstein expanded relativity into his general theory of relativity, he redefined our concepts of time and space. He defined the speed of light as a constant, not just throughout space, but time. Experiments based on this assumption continue to this day to confirm the validity of general relativity. As the decades passed, more and more accurate measures of the speed of light using laser interferometry and newly specified definitions for the meter and the second led to an observed value for C as 299,792,458 meters per second. In 2002, PCW Davies, Tamara Davis, and Charles Lineweaver published a paper in the journal Nature arguing that black holes demonstrate that many, if not all, constants in the universe are variable. The paper used thermodynamics to determine that a change in the electromagnetic interaction between protons and electrons, defined as alpha, over time would predict a steady decline in the speed of light. This was apparently an internally consistent proposition, but it was purely mathematical and based on no observed phenomena at all. Contrary to what many people think, the idea that the speed of light was faster in the past is testable in two ways. Remember that light travels in waves. As shown in Chapter 3, the Doppler effect is the stretching or impacting of waves that we observed when a source of light or sound travels towards us or away from us. This phenomenon also applies when the speed is changed. If light travels faster, it has a higher frequency. For us to be able to see stars from billions of light years away in only 6,000 years due to being faster previously, then at some point, all light must have once been going so fast that the waves were compacted into gamma rays. If this had happened, we couldn't know anything about it because we would all be dead, having long ago been and completely irradiated on a scorching earth. As it turns out, here we are, so that scenario can't be true. As light travels slower, it has a lower frequency. If light from stars billions of light years away left their source at visible frequencies, then over the course of subsequent deceleration, any light emitted would now be stretched out into microwaves. If this is the case, we also wouldn't know anything about it because, one, the light would now be below our visible spectrum, and two, we would all be dead, completely boiled on a scorching earth by these microwaves. As it turns 
turns out, here we are, so that scenario can't be true either. Additionally, Shane Killian has presented his proposition that light from a relatively nearby source such as supernova SN1987A would indicate an even older age for the universe if these waves had traveled faster in the past. Rather than explaining his proposal, I've linked to his video in the description below. Just one month after Davies, Davis, and Lineweaver's paper appeared in Nature, Steve Carlip and Sachin Deovigia published their refutation, also in Nature. This paper pointed out the fatal flaw in the previous paper in that it neglected the fact that thermodynamics is consistent with an increase in alpha whether it comes from a decrease in C, an increase in E, or a combination of the two. Two years later, Davis and Lineweaver published a paper in the publications of the Astronomical Society of Australia to clear up misconceptions in their original paper. They clarified that their calculations would not explain any kind of change in the speed of light that would be consistent with a young universe. At most, they were suggesting a slight redshift and not a significant change in speed. Creationists often criticize evolution for being just a theory, not a fact. This criticism ignores the fact that right or wrong, a theory makes testable predictions. The strength of that theory is predicated upon whether or not those predictions are confirmed by scientific findings. Evolution has done so, and continues to do so. Not only is a creationist proposition unsupported by scientific findings, it is also unsupported by its own predictions. In other words, creationism doesn't even qualify as a theory, let alone a fact. Theories and predictions. Two more examples of how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.